Okay. All right. All right. Now, I was I started my other session here with the idea that, well, I'll wait until they're rolling here. Are they going to roll? Yeah. We just I just started rolling. You can just go right in. Oh. <laughs> anyway, sighted people are overwhelmed by the sky at night when they go out because it's so vast. It seems like there's this gigantic sphere that surrounds us, and but there's only about 2,500 stars that you can see at any one time, or about 5,000 altogether. And there are so many memory hooks and associative devices in this guy, it's really easy to learn. People are overwhelmed by it because they think there's too many to count. And there, there's close groupings of stars, brighter stars, and the names within the areas and different constellations are the same size. And when you see them in the sky and feel them in the map, you can reinforce your memory. And we have 88 constellations, and they're all on the map here, and varying sizes of stars. Their varying brightness is not necessarily because they're bright intrinsically, but this is the way we see it from Earth, the visual brightness. There are many stars that are farther away and brighter that look dim, or many stars that are dimmer and closer that are actually brighter. Now, the closest star, Rigel Cantaris, Alpha Centauri down here, is a fairly bright star. And it's the knee of the centaur, the foot of the centaur. And the brightest star, Sirius, is bright simply because it's relatively close. It's a sunlight star that's close to us, about 50 to 100 light years away. Canopus, the second brightest star. And this blind star map, you can have the feel and see all the stars, and all the constellation lines have a little fishing line that connects all the stars within that grouping. The International Astronomical Union, that's an international group of astronomers, dogmatically set the constellations at 88 years and years ago. And most of them, 44, were named by Ptolemy in ancient times. But when the French explorers went out in their ships a few hundred years ago, they uh, named the southern constellations with instruments of the time, like the microscope and the telescope, and certain artists, things like the uh, uh, Fornax, the sculptor's furnace, and the sculptor, the sculptor's studio, and the Selim, the graving tool that the sculptor uses, Pictor, the painter's easel, and there are other uh, navigational instruments like the octant, and uh, there are lots of birds in the sky and lots of other animals that you can see and feel. And there's an index all the way around the map that you can feel. And they're alphabetical by constellation. And the location is listed by what they call celestial latitude and longitude, declination and right ascension. Now, all the coordinates on the map are based on the Earth's equator extending into the sky. Directly over the Earth's equator is the celestial equator that runs right through the middle of the map. Right at the top, plus 90 is the North Pole, minus 90 is the South Pole. And whatever your latitude is on Earth, that's straight up overhead in the sky. Now, we're about 40 degrees north, so this line right up over here is straight up overhead. And that amount of degrees off the poles, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, down to 40 here, that's what we always see as north circumpolar. There's the big dipper that points to the north star, and the little dipper. And then 40 degrees up from the bottom is our southern horizon. So where we are, we don't see these bottom stars. But, uh, but everything else rises and sets in an arc, and we see half the map at any one time. Now we're approaching here at Christmas time, the December solstice. This line is the apparent path of the sun in the sky. It's actually our orbit projected into the sky. And we're always tilted 23 and a half degrees, and we maintain that tilt. So this is 23 and a half degrees south. We point into the sun there, and, uh, I mean, away from the sun in the wintertime. And 23 and a half degrees north, we point into the sun in the summertime. And wherever the sun is, it's here now, these are the early evening stars, this half, and this half here is the early morning stars. And we can go out and see all these stars when we go out tonight and see them right here. The scorpion, you guys can feel the stars. Are there any questions that you guys have about the stars and how you want to see them? There are about 2,500 that you can see tonight, but if you stay out all night, because we rotate once around our axis, the stars on this side are the morning stars over here where you're feeling right now. And if the, when the sun is in the center of the map at the autumnal equinox, this half is the early evening stars, and this other half is the early morning stars. Now, you feel that, and you can and ask me any questions about it that you want. The, the coordinates here, the plus numbers are the north, and the minus numbers are the south. These bottom numbers here are the hours of the sky from 0 through 24, and all the listing on the index around if you want to find a constellation that says like 12 hours or 12 plus or minus a certain number, depending on one which constellation you want. And you can slide this along and exactly find what your latitude or declination, as they call it in the sky, is. All right, questions? Theo, find a star for me. What constellation would you like to have? Here's the wonders of the wintertime sky now tonight. 
uh, right after the sun goes down, Orion will be start coming up. There's the belt stars of Orion, and down to Sirius, the bright star, the brightest star, and up to the eye of Taurus, the bull here. The horns, the bull. El Deberon is the eye. And this grouping here is more intense grouping through the from that corner down to the middle, and then up to this corner over here is the. Milky Way or the flow of the galaxy. All the stars we see are in our own galaxy and the farthest we can see is the Andromeda galaxy which is this little spot right over here. You can feel that spot in Andromeda. Andromeda is one constellation that's in a grouping that's in the same mythological story along with Cassiopeia, Cephas, Cetus the whale, Perseus, and Pegasus the flying horse. Uh, Andromeda was this daughter of Cassiopeia and Cephas, the king of Ethiop king and queen of Ethiopia. And Cassiopeia, uh, the queen, boasted of her beauty, and as a punishment, the gods chained their daughter Andromeda to this roaring river that was threatened. Uh, she was threatened by this sea monster called Cetus, and uh, Perseus came along and met the Medusa. It was this terrible, terrible ogre that if you looked at her, you'd turn to stone. And he tricked the Medusa by looking at her through his reflecting shield and cut her head off. And when she, and he took the head in his hand, represented by this star, Algol, the demon star. This is the letter K, that's Perseus. He was flying along on the blood spilling to the ground, uh, changed into Pegasus, the flying horse, which is this grouping right here. There's the, the neck of the horse and the head. And here's the, front legs and the wing of the horse is that way. And he saw Andromeda and fell in love with her. Right, that's the tip of the wing, Algenib. And uh, he saw Cetus threatening Andromeda and he had the Medusa's head in his hand. He went up and showed it to uh, Cetus and Cetus immediately turned to stone and he saved Andromeda. And those are five constellations are the most grouping that have the same common story. But all the other ones are really interesting and some of them are shaped just like the thing. Scorpius is shaped just like a scorpion. You guys can feel the scorpion here. That's the tail of the scorpion, the heart of the scorpion. That's a red giant star. It's a huge, huge star. It's, uh, it's, it could fill our whole solar system almost to Saturn. And there's another uh, Aldebaran, the eye of Taurus the bull. You follow your hand up through there and you can feel the eye, the horns of the bull there. The Pleiades are a little grouping called the Seven Sisters right there. The, the summer triangle, what they call the summer triangle, is this grouping right over here. Vega is the third brightest star in the sky. And here's that what you're on now is Sagittarius. It's like a little teapot. There is the handle of the teapot, the, the top of the, and the spout of out here. It's actually the archer's bow. Sagittarius is the archer shooting an arrow that way. And another arrow in the sky is this little thing called Sagitta. So it's this tiny little constellation up right about here. There's Sagitta, and here's Delphinus the Dolphin. It's a little diamond shape. And there's Ikuulius, the little cult <coughs> right next to Pegasus, the flying horse. That's the neck and the, oh, the head and the neck here. and then the legs there. And Ca Aquarius right here, the water jar of Aquarius, that little diamond-shaped grouping. And the little water droplets that flow down into the mouth of the southern fish. Let me get that out of the way. Here's the links. Yes, Havelius, this uh, uh, Dutch astronomer years ago, named that because he said you had needed the eyes of a lynx Jeez. in order to see it. It looks funny. It looks weird. What's a lynx? A lynx is a kind of a lizard. It looks funny though. Snake-like lizard. Hmm. Leo the lion, here's a backward question mark. That's the heart, Regulus, means the prince, named by Copernicus. He was that Renaissance astronomer that Leo. said that the sun was Leo the center Major. instead of the earth like Ptolemy had said. Here's Leo Minor. Well, that's the lesser Leo lion. Minor. This is Leo Major. But it's only a little one. It only has four. Hey, bar. Yeah, it's a, it's a tiny little constellation right under the dip Let's turn that bar around. Mm -hmm. Okay, any questions? You guys have any questions? I'd like you guys to see if you can use this map by finding a constellation you'd like to see, uh, understanding how the coordinates work. And I tried to explain it. The bottom numbers are the hours of the 24 hours, and the vertical piece here can be slid right to the constellation that you want, the latitude that you want, and then you can find your star. I found Perseus. Perseus? Uh -huh. That's the hero. It's like a number K. It's like a letter K. 
Perseus. Where is it, Caden? Right here. Mm -hmm. Right there. I don't want to act it. Why is it like a letter K? It's just C. It's like a little K for cool things. Oh. Now, the longest constellation is Hydra the sea snake, and that's this, this little head here, and it goes all the way back to Libra, uh, back in this way. And that little head there, yeah. And right in the, uh, right in the back of the sea snake is Corvus the crow. This is like a number four whose top numbers point up the spica, the ear of wheat that the virgin is holding. This is the wings of the virgin here. And the diamond of Virgo, here's this star, Spica, Arcturus, Cor Coralli, this is the heart of Charles, it's after an English king. And this is Canis Venositae, that's the hunting dogs, and then down to the tail of the lion. Now that diamond, the diamond of Virgo, can find other things. Halfway between Denebola and Cor Coralli is this field of galaxies here. There's a little hazy okay. patch of stars that are actually the, uh, what they call the realm of the galaxies, and then half... Coma. Coma Berenices. This is a, a lady How can this be the hunting dog who promised Venus if her husband returned safely from war that she would offer her hair. Uh, he returned and she cut her hair for the altar and it disappeared into the sky and there it is. Oh, where? Did she ever That's draw this back? One? I That's this Orion. Thing. I know Orion. Like what would you like? I like to find Pegasus. Pegasus? Pegasus? All right. It's on, it's on the other side of the board. I mean, over here. Yeah. yeah, it's over here. It's actually we'll find on it over both here. sides of the board. Oh, sick. Strange still. Uh-huh. And there's Aquarius, the water bearer, is right major. here. You can, the water jar and the little there's water droplets that fall into the southern fish. How about, how about, uh... Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. You know, how, where, now, where is Pegasus? Where, yeah. where would the numbers... Excuse where, me, you guys. Pegasus is on the bottom, so... Move back a little bit. You gotta move back. Pegasus is on the bottom, so... A-U-R-A-N-U-S. Pegasus is on the bottom, so... A-U-R-A-N-U-S. This bunch of Right, so you move this to 23, okay. Excuse me. All right, now it's at plus 15. Can you find plus 15? And that's the prime 15. 23 plus 15. Now that's plus 5. Here's plus 10. Here's plus 15 right there. Yeah, it's the flying horse Pegasus. Uh -huh. All right, now here you go. There's Pegasus right here. You see Pegasus? All right. And you see there's, there's the wing of the horse this way, the neck of the horse. And there's the head of the horse right there. Mm -hmm. Look at this one. Look, look at this one. It looks like Saturn, you know? It looks like planet with wings around it. Uh -huh. yeah, That's, uh, it's shaped that way because it's sort of like a benchmark in the what, sky. Try and find it's, it's Aquarius. Arcturus. Arcturus. You can find it on the alphabet over here. <laughs> yeah, well, so here's spelled the dipper. A -Q -U -A -R -A -U -S. The arc of the dipper arcs to Arcturus and then down to Spica. Yeah. Wait, way down really to the Southern Cross, these. right uh, here. Yeah. Of course, I bet you had a shovel. Oh, sick! Looks like Saturn. Yeah, they also have a ring around them. Yeah, I, I made that uh, design that way because yeah, so that you could use that as a kind of a. That's the swan that you're feeling. Hello. And There's here, seven of them. I counted them. That's yep. just flying down the Milky Way. The There's the whole the fox. There's the little, the little the arrow. The yeah, and Delphinus right. the dolphin right there. And there's Aquila the eagle. Right. Aquila the eagle. That's bright star Altair, a soaring falcon. Can I have the far in the back of the hand? You do. Yeah. Yep, it goes oh, to Harry. You want to see where it's going? I'm going to find the video. Uh -huh. That's that's one yeah, wing. That's the what. tail. Here. Here's the Leo. Oh, Leo. Leo is 10 plus. Hey, Daddy, where are you going? Leo? All right, so you take the scale. Okay. And you slide that okay, over to what, the number star. 10. ten. You find the 10? It's right. That's the camera. This is minus 85. No, yeah, this is the heart of the lion, named by uh, Copernicus. And that's the be backwards be question mark. Do you feel a backwards yeah. question mark? Yeah. Oh, oh, well, my name is Denny, too. That's oh, no. question mark is sure. pushed the other way around, but that's the way it is. That's the head of the lion, and the tail is in the I think we did all the braille on Danny. We did that yesterday. 
Did you? Yeah, and we put it on so the map all the day. Yeah, we, we, we built the map in three and a half days. Just think of it. We pounded all the nails in on Monday, and we put all the fish line in on Tuesday, and on Wednesday, we did all the brailing, and this morning, we put all the brailing on. Ouch. Isn't that me? Huh? Iku Uleus, that means the little coat. Most of these names are Arabic. Uh, because the Arabs uh, were out in the fields with their flocks and they looked up and of course they had to know astronomy to know which way to turn toward Mecca and that's why they saved the, the book in the overrunning of Carthage. It looks like a triangle though. Ptolemy's book, The Almagest. That's the Aquarius, the little water droplets, that's the water jar and the little water droplets falling up. Aquarius? There, that's the water jar there, and the little water droplets, and there are all these little things falling down into the mouth of the southern fish. That's, that's Fomalo, and that's Arabic for the mouth of the southern fish, and that bright star is the mouth of the fish. Uh -huh. And there is Piscus austrinus, that means the southern fish, and that's the microscope, microscopium. It, it looks like a microscope even. Yeah. Yeah. The telescope. And this is what we're going to study about, is the microscope. Uh -huh. Yeah, well that looks into the microcosm. And of course, we're uh, the, when we look out into the universe, we're looking into the macrocosm. The what very big say, and the very small. What are we going to say about the microscope? Yeah, I mean, telescope? Yeah, well, the telescope is right yeah, down here. Yeah. See the, feel the telescope there? Telescopium. Uh -huh. And above that is the southern crown. There's a little loop of stars right here, the southern yeah. crown. And the, scor and the scorpion, do you see the, that's the tail of the scorpion, and the heart of the scorpion, and the head of the scorpion. And this is in the, the zodiac, there's Libra, the scale, and then we go up to Virgo, the virgin right here, with the wings of the virgin, and up to Leo the lion, there's the back and the tail and the heart of the lion. Yeah, sex stands is just below it, this is that navigational instrument that they use to see to find the latitude. Cephas, like that's the king in that story, like, remember, yeah. about the yeah. king and the queen? This looks like it was two triangles put together. Yep. Yeah. One, two, three, four, right, well it is sort of like the sextant is like that. Sextant has five stars in it. Is this the big dipper? The little no, this one is the shoulders of the water bearer. Don't they have follow those lines back that way. This is Capricornus below. Don't they even have the little dipper? Oh, that is. Oh, like you, a you take another picture of yeah. it? Yeah. It's getting neat. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Mrs. Minor and I are going to see what we can do about your flute. I wonder why the flash yeah. doesn't go. I wonder if maybe the battery's dead. Here's the diamond, way on me. Hey, Edie, I even had to play your flute. Yeah. And, I, and then I didn't even play it. <laughs> Leo Minor is the... The lesser line. Well, we can hardly get them anyways. The lighting, the thing of an angle. Oh, we we'll won't talk about it anymore. Uh, we can, okay, we you can guys, any more exciting questions dots. now that you can mm -hmm. think of that I can explain to you decent. about this I just love it. I've always wondered yeah. what the sky looked like. We've had uh, David Sturmer in the studio before. And you can have, you you can have them any time you want to. They are right here at the, at, the, at, the, so at the school. No matter where you take it from, it's... There's Hercules. hard to figure out what you're looking at. Hercules. Here's Hercules here. He's the kneeling giant. It's like a bow tie. That's also known as the keystone, that little thing there, because it's like a keystone. And he's kneeling. This is his leg up here that's kneeled. And his head is down over this way. And he's holding out a bouquet of flowers. It's also known as Cerberus, which is a mythological oh, three-headed dog. That's the three stars there. And that area right there is called the apex of the sun's way. This guy, William Herschel, discovered that the stars, you know, when you go into an area, seem to converge and go together. That's, a, that's, not, that's not the star, that's a light. <laughs> 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 is this the name of the star or is this one up here? This is, the, Lyra is the name of the constellation and Vega is the name of the star. Vega means the soaring eagle. Is that I have right? A question. Hey, here's a bright star. The ancients also known to call that a turtle.